o oxein, angelin lacedaimoniois, hotite de keimetha, tois keinon, remasipeit homenoi. Having crushed the Ionian revolt, Darius intended to penalize the Athenians and the Eretrians for helping the Greeks in Asia Minor. A great Persian fleet had set sail in 490 BC and was able to subjugate the Cyclades. After that, the city of Eretria was sacked and burned to the ground. The deciding battle between the Persians and the Athenians was fought on the Marathon Plain in Attica. Thanks to Miltiades' counsel, the Athenians succeeded in utterly crushing the invading Persian forces and annulling Darius's intention of conquering Greece. In 486 BC, Xerxes succeeded the Achaemenid throne. Formidable times and despair were yet to come and put the Greeks' capabilities to a final test. Upon pacifying the Egyptian revolt in 483 BC, Xerxes began comprehensive preparations for the invasion of Greece. A canal was dug through Athos, long 2.41 kilometers, and a bridge across the river Strimon constructed. The path which was to be taken was the one Mardonius took in 492 BC. In 481 BC, Xerxes arrived at Sardis, while the army gathered in Cappadocia. The crossing of the Hellespont took place in April 480 BC. The Persian fleet was moving parallel with ground troops. Herodotus tells us that this was the largest force Greeks ever had a chance to fight against. The sheer number of soldiers fighting under Persian command was so great that allegedly it took them seven days and nights to cross the Hellespont. The Greek historian estimates the total number of Xerxes' troops at around 1,700,000, adding that 46 different peoples participated in this enterprise. As is the case with the majority of ancient authors, these numbers must have been exaggerated and are to be taken with a grain of salt. But the crossing wasn't smooth. The first bridge that had been built was destroyed by a storm that supposedly caused Xerxes to impulsively order his subjects to whip the disobedient sea. After the second construction of the bridge, the Persians were able to cross the sea between Abydos and Sestos. By August of 480 BC, the Persians would have reached the peninsula of Halkiriki and were preparing to march southwards. Let us discuss what was happening in Greece before the arrival of Persian troops. After Darius's failed campaign from 490 BC, the Greeks must have been aware that another invasion is going to take place sooner or later. Athens especially took adequate steps to strengthen its army. Even before Darius's invasion, in the year of 493 BC, Themistocles was elected the eponymous Archon and induced Athenians to fortify Piraeus. Also, in 483 BC, thanks to Themistocles' proposal, the state decided to build 200 new ships, funded by the income of the silver mines in Attica, instead of sharing it among citizens. In 481 BC, a Panhellenic assembly was held on the Isthmus, where the participating Greek polis were to decide means by which they are going to hold off the forthcoming Persian invasion. Ever so divided, only 31 Greek state partook in the assembly gathering. These polis concluded an alliance against Persia under a sworn oath. 
it was decided that Sparta wield supreme command over land and naval forces respectively. The northern Greeks, including Thessaly and Boeotia, didn't participate because they would be the first to confront the Persians without any real hope of receiving major help from southern Greeks. Assistance was requested from Crete, Corcyra and Syracuse, but the appeal remained futile. The Greeks gathered at the assembly once more in spring of 480 BC to discuss their strategy. Unlike the previous assembly, Thessalians were now present and demanded the passage lying on the slopes of Mount Olympus, called Tempe, be the point of Greek defense. A force of 10,000 hoplites was dispatched, but soon after arriving, the Greeks were unpleasantly surprised by the discovery of two more passages, rendering their position useless. Instead, the Greek allies chose to defend the passage at the hot gates, Thermopylae. This decision caused all Greek states between Tempe and Thermopylae to join Xerxes' forces by symbolically delivering earth and water. Thermopylae was a wise location to offer resistance to Persian invaders due to the convenient layout of the terrain. The Greeks were aware of superior Persian numbers and tried to mitigate it by forcing it into combat on narrow space where the hoplite style of fighting could exert maximum efficiency. Although it is always said that 300 Spartans only were fighting at Thermopylae, the truth is that around 7,000 Greeks total were present. The small number of soldiers Spartans sent is to be remarked. The Lacedaemonians were expecting the main battle to be fought at the Isthmus, ready to faint-heartedly let the Greeks north of the Isthmus fall under Persian rule. This stance was evident even during the Battle of Marathon, when Spartan authorities refused to send troops to aid Athens, and will also be noticed in the wake of the Battle of Salamis. Shortly after setting the perimeter at Thermopylae, the Greeks had discovered that a secret path through the mountain to the west of the main passage existed. Those were inauspicious news, but nonetheless it was decided to stay at Thermopylae. The supreme commander of Greek forces was Leonidas, the Spartan king. He dispatched a contingent of Phocaeans to guard the secret passage while the main body of Greek forces remained at the main passage of Thermopylae. Persian forces camp was established near the town of Trachis. Expecting the Greeks to either surrender or retreat, Xerxes was idle for four days. On the fifth day, the Persian king lost patience and ordered an attack. Being heavily defeated, the Persians suffered great losses at the end of that day. Even the immortals, who were renowned as the best fighters Persia could offer, had no success. The following day brought Xerxes nothing more than disappointment, and Herodotus writes that it seemed obvious to the Persian king that he had many men but few heroes. But. The good fortune Greeks have so far enjoyed was about to change. A local named Ephialtes sought audience with Xerxes. He then revealed that a hidden path existed and could be exploited for flanking the Greeks. On the seventh day, Xerxes sent his immortals under Hedarnes' command during the night. Upon meeting the Persians, the Phocaeans guarding the passage routed. Soon after, the Greeks in Thermopylae found out that the hidden passage had been discovered. Most of the Greeks fell back, obeying Leonidas' order, while he stayed at Thermopylae with Thespians, Thebans and his Spartans, deeming retreating disgraceful. Although being aware that death is certain, the remaining Greeks provided fierce resistance, which took many Persian lives 
including two Xerxes brothers' lives. Shortly after, Leonidas was killed in combat and Spartans continued fighting by his corpse bitterly. Their fate was sealed after Hidarnes and Ephialtes appeared from the hidden mountain path. It was said that many Spartans fought valiantly at the Battle of Thermopylae, especially the witty Dionysus. Hearing that Persian archers are so numerous and upon firing they can cover the sun, Dionysus said that this is good since they would fight the Persians in shade. The famous epitaph concerning fallen Spartan warriors at Thermopylae, which Herodotus quotes, testifies the stoic nature of Spartan customs. The story of Thermopylae and the brave Spartans became one of the most heroic and yet tragic events in Greek history. The practical side of this battle was that Greeks, although through a sacrifice, gained more time to prepare for a final clash with the Persians. After the Battle of Thermopylae, Xerxes conquered Boeotia and had the path to Athens wide open. In this video, we have covered the history of Greco-Persian Wars from 490 BC to the Battle of Thermopylae. The topic of the next video will be the fateful Battle of Salamis. Feel free to leave suggestions for future videos. This channel deals not only with ancient Greek history, but with all aspects of the ancient Greek civilization. Sources, society, religion, mythology, philosophy, art, famous individuals, and so on. Links to social media pages are in the description. Thank you for watching this documentary about the Greco-Persian Wars on the Ancient Greek Logos channel.